Thank you, gentlemen, for the day. Aren't you going to ask me about my politics? Excuse me? You asked other people what I believe, so aren't you going to ask me? What are you doing? Well, wouldn't you say most of the people you work with consider you a liberal? Do you mean, am I now, or have I ever been a liberal? It's a legitimate question. Is it? Oh, uh, you brought it up. No, you did, when you asked all of my co-workers. So I'll tell you. I don't believe in labels. I think most people have a mixture of views. That's not what we're talking about. Then what are you talking about, Larry? What we're talking about is you bringing your politics into your reporting. I did nothing of the kind. Nothing? Really? Is that why when Barnes told you he got Bush into the guard, you believed him without question? That when Bill Burkett, an outspoken Bush critic and admitted liar, brought you memos, you assumed their authenticity and didn't bother to source them? That when not one but two of the four document examiners expressed doubts the memos were real, you just pushed that aside and rushed this on air? Or why you personally contacted the John Kerry campaign on behalf of Bill Burkett, a man who has dedicated himself to smearing the president? Tell me, Mary, where exactly does politics not enter into this? Or are you just that bad at your job? Do you know what it would take to fake these memos? Mary. No, this is important. It would require the forger to have an in-depth knowledge of the 1971 Air Force Manual, including rules and regulations and abbreviations. He would have to know Bush's official record front to back to make sure none of these memos conflicted with it. He would have to know all of the players in the Texas Air National Guard at the time, not just their names, but their attitudes, their opinions, including how they related to one another. He would have to know that Colonel Killian kept personal memos like this for himself in the first place. He would have to know how Killian felt at the time, particularly about his superiors, and then First Lieutenant Bush. He would have to know or learn all of this in order to fool us as you assume he did. Now, do you really think that a man who takes this kind of time and precision then goes and types these up on Microsoft Word Our story was about whether Bush fulfilled his service. But nobody wants to talk about that. They want to talk about fonts and forgeries and conspiracy theories because that's what people do these days if they don't like a story. They point and scream. They question your politics, your objectivity, hell, your basic humanity. And they hope to God the truth gets lost in the scrum. And when it is finally over and they have kicked and shouted so loud we can't even remember what the point was. But you didn't prove it. You didn't prove uh, Ben Barnes got the president into the guard. You didn't prove the memos are real. The burden of proof is on you. By that standard, the Times would never have run the Pentagon Papers, the Post would never have listened to Deep Throat. Ben Barnes is hardly Deep Throat. Ben Barnes has confessed to abusing his power to keep some of the richest and most privileged sons of Texas from getting their asses blown up in Vietnam. Ms. Mapes, don't you think it's possible, just possible, that some of those fine young privileged men, as you call them, got into the National Guard on their own merit. No, sir. No, I do not. <laughs>